So in this video, I'm going to go through the second substitution rule, and I don't really have a formal definition for this rule. To me, it doesn't really even seem like a rule because I don't really see where the substitution is coming from. It's so covert that I can't really see where it's coming from. But here's our statements. We have P being P implies Q implies R, and P1 being negated P or Q implies R. So, in all honesty, what it tries to do is try to show that P is logically equivalent to P1. And that this is pretty much a tautology. And we can show that P, impl P implies Q implies R is logically equivalent to P1. And what I really what I'm really getting at is this example will show you a way to simplify your statements, which is pretty much the most important use of the laws of logic that you have learned. Now what we have learned in one of my past videos is that P implies Q. There's another way of representing this. Well this is pretty much logic equivalent to negated P or Q. So these two statements are logic, logically equivalent. They're one and the same and yeah they're a tautology. So just by doing that we simplified the statement and we already showed that P implies P1. And I guess that is where the substitution rule comes from because we just took this, took this P implies Q, we simplified it to negated P or Q and we simply plugged that back into P. So simplifying and using the second substitution rule to substitute this statement back into this first P statement will give us P1. So that's P1 and we have just showed that P is indeed logically equivalent to P1. Now let's go through a second example and let's have P Let's have P be P implies P or Q. And let's have P1. Let's have P1 be uh, P implies double negated P or Q. Now, let me see here. Just check my notes, see if I got the question right. And it does look like it's right. So I'm pretty sure you guys have already seen how to make P equal to P1 in this case. Simply because two negated symbols pretty much cancels out each other and this makes it P. So what I'm trying to say is through the, I believe it was the double negation law, the law of double negation, which is in your laws of logic, two negation symbols and P pretty much is logically equivalent to P. So right away, we showed that P1 is indeed logically equivalent to P. Because this is pretty much P. And that is equivalent to that. Now, we can extend it further, say P2. We can have it so that there's another way to represent this. And it's by negating the first P, having two negation symbols for the first P and having two negation symbols with the second P, like we did here, and having OR Q. Now we know that this is P and this is P as well, so the P2 is logic equivalent to P1, which is logic equivalent to P. And that's pretty much it for the second substitution rule. It's not that difficult. It's just a means of simplifying, uh, simplifying your statements and well let's just go through one more example and uh, well actually let's just go through this example in the next video because I feel like I'm running out of time so in the next video we're gonna go through some simple examples of how to simplify our compound statements but other than that please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time oh and don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter